Hello everyone. For this video, I will talk about how to set up the RSSR without any problem, without the telemetry problem, LUS script problem, binding problem, and all the stuff. So let's see what is the approach. Let's see what is the problem that might occur when you setting up an RSSR. So first of all, I will tell you the way that will solve all the problems. If you are just about to set up your RSSR on your quad, so this is the way to go. Uh, the, the answer is to use F port. If you know how to use F port, then uh, the rest of the information is is not necessary for you. But if you don't know, then these are the information that you might want to read. So first of all, you have to update the RSSR firmware to F port firmware. Well, the, at the moment I dig it, there was there were two type of F port related firmwares, which are beta flight beta firmware for F port and F port protocol firmware. I don't know about the, the first one. I don't know about the beta firmware for F port. So I choose the one I, I know from the the video from Joshua Bradwell. He mentioned it about this firmware but not the beta firmware. So I choose the one that I know. F port protocol firmware version 1 H0228 and the another information that you want to know that each firmware has two types for EU and non-EU version. For the EU version, there, there is the, the alphabet LBT on the names of the firmware. For non-EU version, the alphabet FCC will appear on the name of the firm, firmware. So choose the type of firmware uh, the same as your transmitter module so that you can bind it. If you use a different type of firmware here, you will be unable to bind your RSSR. And then and, uh, next step is to wire your receiver for F port. It just is best why it doesn't need, doesn't need to use anymore. You just wire the smart port Y to an available UART, UART TX and you are done for the wiring. The next step is set enable F port in beta flight or any other program that you use to control your flight controller. Actually, I use beta flight. Well, what you need to do is in the port tab, set serial RX on the UART that you wired the smart port. And then in configuration tab, select serial based RX and free sky F port. And then next step is to test it. It may work if you check on the receiver page and you get the response from moving your transmitter stick and uh, and the all the data in this receiver page is moving, then you are done. But if there's no movement on this page, then you have to move on to the next step. What you need to do more is that you have to type a few lines in the CLI page. I use F3 flight controller, a little bit old, but that's what I'm using. Then for F3 and F7 flight controller, you need to type set serial eyes underscore half duplex space equals space on. Then enter, uh, hit enter, and then type set serial eyes underscore inverted equal to on. Enter again, and then type save and enter. Once you save, the flight controller will reboot itself and you go into uh, connect to the flight controller again and check the receiver page again. If 
in the receiver page, everything is moving. Roll, pitch, yaw, all the stick, all the button is moving, then you are good to go. Another thing that you might want to check is to check the work, uh, whether the telemetry and the LUA script working or not. Go to your telemetry, telemetry screen page and check all the data that you want to use, whether this is on or not. If it's not on, go to the setup screen on the Tyranis and uh, for the value you want, the value that is might be missing, there may be another ID name for the value. It may be a re repeated ID names. For example, for me, I the data that was missing was the VBAT the voltage of the battery which is its ID is VFAS so I go to the, the VFAS and scroll up or down and I found another VFAS actually I found three VFAS on on the selection so I choose another VFAS and then check the telemetry again and it works for me. Choose another ID name for the value that you want. Well, that is all for the short type of answer in setting up our exercise. So the next uh, episode is uh, the next thing is that I will explain you the problems in case you already try to setting the uh, you are SSR up and you encounter some problem and you don't know which step are you on so these are my experience the first problem that i got is the lus script telemetry or even the receiver itself are not always work sometimes it can even arm because it's not turned on i plug in the quad and the receiver doesn't turn on so then I update my RxSR firmware to the latest version for Xbox usage and for the LPT file type which is version 171103 I thought that my transmitter module was uh, EU version but actually it's not it is a non-EU version so I choose the wrong type of firmware. The result is that I cannot buy the RSSR. So when I cannot buy, I change to the the FCC type firmware, which is non-EU version. And the latest version at the moment I I updated is one seven one zero zero nine, and then it can be bought. All the or the firmware version I will show you after this uh, then after I update my firmware to the correct EU or non EU version but I'm still using SBUS here it is at the first place I use SBUS as smart port separator that caused many problems later on so after update to the correct type non-EU version I cannot change VTX channel on Tyranis or sometimes the real VTX channel doesn't change according to the Tyranis change or sometimes I cannot select some specific, specific video channels in my case it is Brass Band 2 and Brass Band 3 you can read to the in the details below and I try many things until uh, I finally being told by someone that F port will solve all the problem. So the last thing I do is I update the RSSR firmware to F port protocol firmware version 180228. And then why up the RSSR for F port usage and set up butterfly as I mentioned above. Finally, all things work. So next, I will show you the page to the firmware that you want to have. Okay.
go to the page that you want to go is the free sky dash rc.com product rssr like this and you scroll down hit the download tab and there will be manual firmware f port protocol firmware and bit of firmware for f port which i don't know what it is so the one that i use and work is f port protocol firmware and the latest version is 180228 so i choose this version and after you download it and unzip the file you will get you will get something like this 180228 you will get two files the FCC for non-EU and the LBT for EU version so choose according to your Taranis module firmware and that is it for the firmware selection next I will show you some details about uh, updating <coughs> firmware on your receiver some details that I, I think should be more uh, clearly mentioned so let's go and see how to update the receiver firmware so this is how to wire your ISSR in order to update its firmware so this is the harness that you got from the the package but uh, the actual the origin the original harness is not correct in order to update rear Taranis X90 plus I mentioned that this is the harness for Taranis X90 plus receiver updating only if you use QX7 or other Horus receiver you may not need to do this adapting so the the original harness will be like this just a little more focus here will be like this yeah uh, it will be black red then yellow and the red will be in the center but what you need to do is to swap these two wires uh, the black and the red one you need to swap it into like this yeah you need the red one the black one then the yellow one on this side and then connect it to your receiver then after this you plug the harness into your the back of your transmitter your tyrannis this way you put the yellow one below you put the yellow one in the bottom and you use only the, the bottom three pins the bottom three pins only the yellow at the bottom like this here this is what uh, I didn't see in some video explanation like this yeah yeah the bottom one like this yeah it will be look like this this is the correct wiring so then you go to the the update thing then you turn on And you long hit the menu button, select page, then scroll down to the firmware, hit it up one time, and choose the firmware in your Taranis SD card. And select it. Now long press enter long press enter and you choose flash external device 
flash external device only. Do not select flash internal module. You will destroy your module firmware. Hit enter and you wait for it. It will be in the writing mode and you have to wait for it. Do not turn off your transmitter or do not press anything. You have to wait until it finished otherwise your receiver might be damaged and irreversible damage. So, here you are, once you're done waiting, so it's done, it's done, you can turn off your trimness right away, and remove your receiver out of your trimness, and your receiver is good to go.